So welcome to the new American Test Kitchen, yes. right? Welcome. Starring Judy Bradburn and producer, <laughs> editor, and cameraman. Woman. <laughs> woman. Camera woman. Yes. This day and age, it's woman. Woman. Or people. Person. Women. Something like that. Yes. Anyhow, let's drink to this event. And so Judy, what are you making today? I am going to make almond roca today, preparing for the holidays. Well, that is so thoughtful of you. I know, isn't that gonna be fun? That's fantastic. <laughs> okay. First of all, I'd like to kind of talk about the products, that, the implements that we use to make our almond roca with. I have here a marble slab. It's 18 inches by 18 inches. And I can actually get two batches of candy on this one marble slab. If you don't have this, you could also, you could possibly go to a, a place that does marble or granite and buy you um, a small marble slab or a granite one. I would not advise putting it on your counter, even though I have a quartz countertop, I would never put my candy on it because um, it can stain and, it can, and I know it kind of stains granite. So if any of you ever wanted to make candy and wanted to use my marble slab, you're welcome to borrow it. Um, here I have a 10 inch cast iron skillet. This skillet has been used for candy for so many years, it actually has a buildup of, of sugar <laughs> around it. And Grandpa even used some of his electric tools trying to clean this, this buildup off for me and it never ever worked. So this skillet is only used for candy. I do not cook in it um, anything else. And another item I wanted to talk about is a very flexible, thin spatula. And I'm going to show you what we're going to use that for. I know that we all kind of have an offset spatula to frost cakes with or whatever, but it really needs to be thinner than that. And Amazon has these really thin spatulas, if you're interested. And then, of course, I have a silicone spoon that I use to stir our candy with because it gets very hot. Uh, before I even start to make the candy, I make sure that my marble slab is well buttered. So I just take a pretty good pat of butter and um, smear it all over my marble. And you want a pretty good coating, so I'm actually going to put a little bit more than that on here. You kind of have to judge. You do not want this candy to stick because if it sticks, when you try to take it off to uh, put the chocolate on, it's going to break. And that's okay because we're going to break it anyway to eat it, but it's much easier to put the chocolate and the almonds on if it's not broken. So I think I've got a pretty good coat on there. And so we're ready to start cooking. Yay. So last night I made two batches of candy. These were poured out on the marble slab and after they cooled, I put them on these cookie sheets. This one has not had anything done to it yet. I haven't put the chocolate on or the nuts. This one over here, I did put the, the chocolate on and I put the almonds on. And later on, I'll be turning this over and putting chocolate and almonds on the other side. So when you, excuse me, Judy, when you put the almonds on this side, do you kind of pat that into it? I pat them in as best I can so they'll stick as much as possible. But when I do turn this over, some of them fall off and I just save them for the next batch, the ones that fall Perfect. off. Perfect. And this actually, um, has sat overnight to uh, to get the chocolate hot, firmed up so that when I flip it over, it won't be all melty and messy. So you put you, you made this, you let it cool, then you put your chocolate on, and while your chocolate's still wet a bit, mm -hmm. you put the almonds on. Got it. Yes, and then many times before I turn it over and do the other side, I'll put this whole thing out in the garage someplace where it's a little cooler and this can set up faster. Or like this batch, I, I stuck it in the refrigerator for a little while so the chocolate can set up. Okay. So we're just ready to start making the candy. I totally forgot to take the butter out of the refrigerator so it's really cold, but you need a half a pound of butter, which is two sticks. Um, I'm, so I'm gonna turn the burner on. And I cook it on my gas stove between around the number six, which is medium high. Do we need another little drink of wine before you go any further? Oh, well, sh you should surely. probably have I one. I shall have a sip. Okay. We get, yeah. Okay, this even is, yeah. Steven. Yeah. <laughs> so I've turned my burner on, and on my gas stove, it's on a number six, which is medium high. 
You don't want to cook it too low because the butter will not meld in with the um, sugar very well if it's too not hot enough. And on the other hand, you don't want it so hot that it burns it either. So I'm going to throw in... <laughs> Throw that sugar right in there, Judy. I know. <laughs> it calls for one cup of sugar. So you just put that right in there. With and you the don't have to wait for the butter to be totally melted to no, do it? No, you don't have to. This is easy schmeasy. Wowzer. This is three tablespoons of water. And you just dump it right in. And those three ingredients is what makes almond roca. So about how long does it take for this to happen? Well, this takes a little while. Um, it takes a because now my butter has to totally melt because it's not at room temperature. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stand here and stir it pretty much the whole time. Um, so it might take five minutes, six minutes, something like that. So it's a good time to have another sip of wine oh, while this is happening. Absolutely, you could have another whole glass <laughs> if you run out. <laughs> um, as you can see, I have a peanut butter jar here. And there is a purpose of that. Um, my mom, uh, your guys' grandma, most of you guys' grandma, uh, she took lots of candy making classes and she made all kinds of wonderful candies. Uh, and they always used a, a candy thermometer for their candy, except for almond roca. And the instructions say to cook this until it's just a shade darker than peanut butter. Oh, for pity's sake. So I don't use the candy thermometer. I keep my peanut butter here. And, and this is where Grandpa always came in handy because I could never tell what was a shade darker than peanut butter. But anyway, um, that's, that's what the instructions say to do. So when it starts to uh, cook and starts to turn dark, we'll be keeping our jar real handy so that we don't cook it too long. Well, isn't that clever? Isn't that interesting? So, so do you use the peanut butter just through the plastic container, or do you actually take a spoonful out to compare? Nope, I just hold it just like this and go, oh, yeah, oh, that looks like, oh, that's about a shade darker. I'll be jiggered. <laughs> now, before it gets to the shade darker, just before, I, I will throw in a teaspoon of vanilla, and I do it before it gets too dark because it takes a while to stir the vanilla into the candy. Um, so we'll do that later as it approaches the color of peanut butter. Wow. So water, butter, sugar. That's it. That's it. Till I get to the vanilla. You know, God made those three ingredients for a purpose. Now he, we know why. Now we know why. And we can talk about the chocolate a little bit. Uh, as you all know, I like milk chocolate. Um, so I'm using, there's 12 uh, candy Hershey's, uh, no, Hershey's, yeah, milk chocolate candy bars in this pot, and I'm going to be melting it, and that's what we use for candy. And that's on a double boiler, so you've got water in your bottom pot, yes. and you're just melting it slowly. Have you ever tried to do that in the microwave? No, I always do it like this. Because you I'm know that school. works. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't blame you, because yeah. I can ruin it in a microwave. Right, me too. So, so it's know. just sitting over there, and it's just you just need it to be melted. You don't probably even use a candy thermometer in. Nope, I just melt it, and then that's what we'll put on. Uh, because you can overheat chocolate, and it seizes up. So you're taking it off when it's just melted, if I'm assuming. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, whenever it's melted. <laughs> well, we're, yes. we're going to look at that because I, I have seized chocolate ah. up over a double boiler oh like that gosh. before. I've never had that happen, and I keep it on here. Um, well, you know when to take it off. Yes, I guess I just kind of know. Yeah, so we're going to look at that close. We're going to look at that close. That can happen even even in a double boiler. You can seize up chocolate. All right, so we'll be careful with that. So um, I do want to ask, so in the double boiler... Uh, are you l actually letting that water come to a boil that's in the bottom part? Yeah. Oh, wow. It'll okay. boil. Okay. You yeah. know, and I think your pot has a lot to do with it, too. Well, and this is not a double boiler, per se. These are just two pots. Right. So uh, I don't even use a, a true, real double boiler, but I have in the past. Wow, look at this is really boiling. <gasps> yes, this is, this is coming right along. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the almonds that I use. I use uh, sliced almonds, and they're kind of flat, and they're sliced thin. And the reason I do that is they're very easy to chop. Uh, I don't have to do that much chopping for the um, 
before I put them on the candy. Okay. So do you measure those out? Nope. You just use the whole bag, I chop it up? I just use the whole bag, chop it up, and what I don't use, I freeze. So do you chop it up with a knife? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And not, you don't put it in a blender? No, because... Because you could get it too powdery. don't want it too powdery. And then, of course, the Hershey bars are oh. just like what oh, you buy for s'mores. Oh, we have to see the Hershey's for s'mores. And do you use this whole package? I use two of those. <gasps> oh, my I, I might not use them all, so whatever's left in the pot, you can just lick Eat. the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can use any chocolate. Uh, I've made almond roca mainly for Alden one year, and I used dark chocolate. <laughs> oh. Um, and, which it, and it worked fine? It worked fine. So you can use any kind of chocolate you want. You just have to, it has to be able to melt well. I think with all the sugar that's in here, Making it out of dark chocolate for Alden probably isn't really necessary. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I knew I know he likes dark he chocolate. Likes dark so chocolate. that was very sweet. So that's what I did. So yes, this is cooking really nicely, and I don't leave it. I don't leave it for a second. Um, I keep stirring it and just keeping my eye on it because once it does start to kind of turn, it's going to turn quick. Okay. Yeah, so we're probably, you've been doing that at high heat for um, probably at least five, almost six minutes it's been oh. working away. Okay, so it takes longer than what I thought. So Well, we were talking a few of those minutes. Yeah. So it, But it's close to that five minute mark. I'm going to turn up my chocolate a little bit because we're going to flip over that candy pretty soon that's already been made and and frosty put the chocolate this on the other so side. This is so exciting, Judy. I'm going to have another sip of wine. Oh, I'm so yeah. excited. Me too. <laughs> Probably one of the reasons that the sides of my uh, cast iron skillet are have a layer of cooked on sugars and stuff is because I don't wipe the sides down with water. And if like if you're making fudge or something like that, you generally want to wipe the sides down with water so the fudge doesn't crystallize. It'll stay nice and creamy. Um, but I don't do that on this. But you do kind of scrape the sides a little bit with your spoon. And I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this probably boils a lot more than what fudge would. So oh. it's getting a lot hotter, so it probably is melting those crystals that might be there. Right. That's a good point. That's probably true. I'm just making that up. Well, that sounds, sounds good. right. Doesn't sounds it? good to me. This is very hot. We don't we don't want to cook this when baby Forrest is in the no. kitchen because <laughs> this is extremely hot. Yeah. Just a. I just thought about that last night. I thought, oh man, if there's a baby around, this could be so dangerous. Um, so. I bet back in the day, when your grandma and mom were making it, did your grandma make it too? No, no just, just your mom. mom. I bet there were babies in the room. They didn't think about those things back yeah, then. That's probably May true. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Why do we think about those things when we get older? Oh, I don't know. When you're young and foolish, you just don't, don't think. Don't you know, think about it. It's like seatbelts, you know. Who needed them? Who needed those? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm worried about hot candy being dumped <laughs> on the floor. But or that something. is hot. That's That would blister you in a heartbeat. Oh, this is hot. Hot, hot, hot. It's just now kind of starting to get a, a little bit of color. Mm -hmm. And as it approaches the color of the peanut butter, I'll throw the vanilla in. You kind of stand back when you do that because yeah. it sizzles. <laughs> it sizzles. Yes, it does. It sizzles and it takes a couple of minutes to, to, to get it blended in. But in those two minutes, this could turn dark real quick. Wow. So we just have to be so careful. But you put the vanilla in before it's totally peanut butter color. Right, yeah. right. This is so exciting, Judy. It is. For years we've eaten this and had no idea how it was made. Oh, well, here you go. I have made it many, many times without putting vanilla in it, actually. I have to have true confessions here. Because to me, I can't tell the difference. Yeah. I mean, it's sweet got chocolate and I just never thought it needed vanilla so if you want to omit the vanilla uh, step I think you certainly could well yours is so good and so maybe to get more if you wanted more vanilla maybe just putting more vanilla but it's so hot I would imagine it really burns it off quickly mm -hmm. and it maybe is. that's why the vanilla flavor doesn't I mean I don't think anybody's ever eaten your candy and said oh, 
you you forgot the vanilla. You forgot the vanilla. No, by the time you get the chocolate and the nuts and the you know yeah. <laughs> everything on oh, it. Oh, it's You're, really starting to turn now, isn't it? It's turning. It's starting to turn. And it, like I say, it'll once it starts, it turns rather quickly. So when you put the vanilla in, do you turn the heat off at that point in time, or you leave it on and you just I leave stir like mad? Stir like crazy. I leave it on. Because even, and you have to kind of, I mean, I've had it happen where I think it's the right color on the stove, and by the time I walk it over to the, to the other counter to pour it out on the marble slab, it's turned almost too dark. Oh, I really? mean, it just happens quick. so quick. So you have your hot pad have ready. Hot pad ready. Absolutely. It's gonna take that for sure. In fact, I'm going to turn this because I'm going to move quick when this starts getting closer. So let me hold your jar up here just as a comparison. So it's really close. It's I mean, close. it's not there yet, but it is so close. So close. Just a shade darker than peanut butter. Oh, here's a fa funny fact that I discovered. I usually buy... <gasps> oh, jeez. Oh. oh, God. Oh, 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 oh. Accident. We're okay. We're okay. All is well. Judy All just well. probably has a dirty stove and, a, and maybe a little blister on A little finger. blister. Oh. But what I wanted to share was Jiffy peanut butter is a little bit lighter than Skippy. Oh. So um, you don't have to do it as dark. I mean as uh, long. Long. Okay. So vanilla. I'm going to put the vanilla in and it's going to sizzle up. Oh boy, I'm gonna have to clean oh, we my get to stove. eat that. I know. We get Let to it eat get that. cold. I mean, peel it off. Yeah. <laughs> so to me, this is. Oh, that's. It's very, very close. You're actually just a tiny, tiny bit darker. Yeah, not much. Not much. So we're ready. Um, Don't touch that. This no. is how fast accidents can happen. That's why I talked about having the baby. We planned that. <laughs> we planned that. Was, we wanted to show how that was going to happen. Yeah. So, I'm going to take this off. It's wet. It's, I'm going to take this off and walk over to the slab, marble slab. And the so I'm just going to pour it right out onto my marble. Just like that. Oh, it smells so good. Yeah. It smells like butter and sugar caramel <laughs> in here. Oh my gosh. All of that. Now I'm going to do something you're not supposed to do, but if I don't do this, this will get so hard in the pan, I can't wash it. It's right. going over to the sink and I'm putting water in it. And it'll sizzle. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. That's our candy. And the reason that we have this is you want to keep this candy loose because if you just let it sit here, it's going to stick and that's going to be a problem. So you don't need to butter that spatula? It's, no. Okay. But I'm going to run it just around oh. the edges. Okay. And I'm going to do this several times While um, it's cooling. until it's cool. Oh, okay. And when it gets closer to, to getting harder and cooler, I'm going to actually slide it around on my board to make sure it's still well buttered and doesn't stick. So that's, that's why we amazing. need a really thin right. spatula. Oh my gosh. I can't wait. <laughs> Look at the line up there. Good job, Judy. Yes. So this is it. That's all you have to do. And so for this to totally cool to where you can work the next step, it's kind of rainy today in the 60s outside. About how long do you think it'll take to cool? This is going to take a couple hours. A couple of hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you yeah. could, if you wanted to hurry that up, you could actually carry this out to the garage if you wanted to. You just have to take your spatula out there every so often. I know, I'd have to go out to the garage and run my spatula around But maybe it. it's better to let it just kind of cool naturally. Yes, but you still need to do this yeah. occasionally. And I, I can go ahead and we can frost this, but I'll always still come back to this and keep this moving. Okay. We always want to keep this moving or it will break on you. Ah. And then it's really hard to put the chocolate on if it's oh, it all would. broken up. It would run through the cracks. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Not, not good to have something run through yeah. the cracks. So that's that. Excellent. That's all there Yay. is to it. Yay. Now we're going to go put a little more ice on Judy's hand. Okay, so the candy is firming up, and I've been doing this to keep it loose all the time, but now it's firm enough that I can actually slide it across my marble slab 
because I used all that butter. And I will want to continue to do this uh, several times during the time that this is cooling. It's still very hot. Um, so, but it's firm enough to do this and, and you want to keep this moving because if it sticks, then it's really hard to put the chocolate on because it'll break up. Excellent. So Judy's got her fingers on ice and over there on the stove is the caramel, which Judy and I discovered that it's now cool enough. It comes off in chunks and it's really tasty. <laughs> yes, <laughs> kind of messy, but tasty. <laughs> Good job, Judy. So show us the consistency of your chocolate, Judy, before you pour it on there. Here's my chocolate, all melted and ready to go. This is 12 candy bars. I did this last night and it's, I probably didn't use quite six candy bars, but um, I'll be frosting this one and I'll be frosting this one later. So I'll need all 12 and maybe even more. Okay. So what we have to do though is we have to flip this over and when I flip it over, some of this, these almonds are gonna fall off and I'll just save them for the next batch. And sometimes during the flip, this candy breaks, which is okay. Um, Look at that, perfect, Judy. Just flip it over. <gasps> Yum. Just like that. Pour some chocolate on, quite a bit. And I just spread it around with my spatula and I get all the way to the corners. There's no corners on that. Oh, right. I get all the way to the <laughs> edge. Because when I break this up, you know, to tell you the truth, some of this chocolate kind of falls off uh, as you break. And so you want a nice coating of chocolate. Oh, that on looks there. absolutely perfect. So that's all I do there. And then I take my nuts that I've already chopped. These are the almonds. And um, I just. I just sprinkle them on like this, as many as I want. Beautiful, Judy. And just keep going until you have your chocolate covered the way you want it. Because remember, some of these will fall off. There's no stopping it. And then I just take my hand and I just I just gently press them down so that as the chocolate hardens, they kind of stick just a little bit better. That's going to be so and Then you have to wash your hand off or lick oh, it lick off. Lick it, lick it off. Or lick it. <laughs> Whichever you want to do. And now that candy, uh, before I break it up, should rest for about, I would let it rest overnight normally, but we're gonna put it in the refrigerator and break it up in a, in a little while. Oh, exciting. So the refrigerator won't, won't hurt it temperature wise, I mean moisture wise or anything, you just slap it in there. Just slap it in there, just like this. No, co no cover, no saran, just no open nothing. air. Yep. Just pop it in, wait for the chocolate to harden and then we'll break it up and we'll eat some. Yay. Okay, so Judy, we're ready what? To do what to this? Well, so both so our, our chocolate is all set up on both sides of this candy, so we're just gonna break it up now into bite-sized pieces. So I just wanna insert here, Judy's a little concerned because we just had a glass of wine and played some cards, so she's a little concerned about being able to do this. I know, I hope I can break it up without <laughs> destroying the whole candy. Okay, so what I do is I just I just kind of pick it up and I just break it. <laughs> and then, you know, it comes off in chunks. chunks so. <laughs> so you want bite-sized pieces so that people can just pick up a bite and eat a piece of candy. So I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to break it up. Those are chuck-sized pieces. Chuck-sized. And it's, it's really hard. Is it normally that hard, or is it just because it was in the refrigerator? It's normally not quite this hard. So I've had it in the refrigerator, so it's gotten kind of hard. And sometimes some of the chocolate falls off, or some of the almonds fall off, and that's okay. So It's just what it does. So you could actually take a sledgehammer. No. Well, <laughs> I hope it doesn't break our teeth. <laughs> no, it's Oh, fine. it looks so good. Oh, my gosh. 
So you want your uh, family to just have bite-sized pieces and not have a big old chunk of candy. Oh, don't, not too much candy. Oh, yeah. Don't want to make them too big because God forbid that we'd have a big chunk of candy. But you can see that it's really oh, it nice, looks delicious. nice thickness. It's, um, it turned out really, really good, I think. It it's is hard. beautiful. Yeah. So all of these almonds that are now falling off, I'll save those and put them on the next batch of candy. Okay. They'll still be good. And you just keep going till you got it all done. Excellent. Just like that. This is really hard. It's not usually this hard, but like we said, it's been in the refrigerator, so it's gotten quite firm. Good job, Judy. Yes. I'm sure all of us will get a little taste of this come Christmas time. So Judy, should we tell them what you're gonna do with the other two pieces of caramel? Is that what you would call the center part? The Well, the roca part. The um, roca part. I would say, since we haven't put any chocolate on them or any nuts, uh, like we talked about, I think we can stick them in the freezer. And then as we get closer to Christmas and we're getting ready to eat them, then we can put the chocolate on and put the almonds on at that time. Excellent. Because if we put the chocolate on and the almonds now, we'd have to eat it. Oh, God forbid. Yeah. That would just be the worst case scenario. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, family, there you, go. there you go. We've got Grandma Judy breaking up <laughs> her almond roca. Good yes. job, Judy. Yes, enjoy, you guys. Thanks, bunches. Bye bye. My glass of wine. <laughs> it's, it's too funny. <laughs> Okay, so what is it I want? I had all in my mind what I was going to say. So this is the new American Kitchen. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and Judy's the star. Oh. And I will be the producer, cameraman, and editor. And we're going to start out right, right? Right. <laughs> so I'm going to have a little okay. toast of cheers. Me too. Cheers. So do you think we'll get enough uh, footage in here that we might have some bloopers too? Uh, well, we can try. <laughs> yes, I'm sure there's going to be lots of bloopers actually. I'm sure there <laughs> will be. Okay, yeah, that's just, that's a wrap right there. Ooh. But it's still running. But it's okay, because oh. it, it has to. <laughs> you know, we're going to do this so many times that we get so comfortable with it. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure there's going to be lots of bloopers, actually. I'm sure there will be. Okay. Yeah, that's just, that's a wrap right there. Ooh. But it's still right. But it's okay. Because oh. it, it has to. Am I? Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> you know, we're going to do this so many times that we get so comfortable with it. My glass is off. Okay. So it's running. Oh, I'm, and I want to take mine off, too, because it just puts a glare on. Oh, yeah. They're not pretty. So I think we're kind of there. So stay right there. I'm gonna go look. I'm gonna see where you are. Oh yeah. You're gonna I get to exercise. Kind of out here. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> I can't wait so to eat some. Well, we're gonna eat some for sure. <laughs>